Welcome. Welcome to today's class, English Critical Theory. And our focus is that we'll be trying to connect all the theories with the literature, meaning that the things that, the stuff that you're going to read. You understand me? The stuff that you're reading. Meaning that we're going to cover so many poetry, we're going to cover novel, and then we'll be trying to connect those theories with this novel and the poetry. And remember that when you're uh, just trying to read critical theory, it, might, it, it may sound a bit difficult for you to understand because why? Because theory is not a piece of cake for you. It's a, it's a piece of stone for you and it's a boring sometimes. So what you need, make sure that you are giving it full energy and you are trying to comprehend. Why? Because there, we say that there are three terms. Like it says that ethos, pathos, logos. Have you heard of this term before? Given by a circle. Ethos, pathos, logos. So it says that, like, ethos meaning that when you're taking the knowledge, right? Ethos, you must be so eager to take the knowledge. And then the pathos is something like that you're trying to understand them, what the teacher is saying. And the logos is that then you will be coming into a discussion session, meaning that you'll be giving, like, the logic why it has been said or why it hasn't been said here. So these are called the things. So you'll be trying to understand me as well. So what I'll be appreciating, meaning ethos, pathos, logos. Here is a great, uh, Latin word, ethos, pathos, logos. Meaning that you'll be trying to understand what I say, and then you'll be trying to discuss with me what I have said to you. Meaning we'll have a discussion session here. And make sure that you mark your question that you're going to ask me, and then I'll be helping you to uh, make sure that we can cover our okay. time. So we'll be focusing on this, my last duchess written by Robert Browning. And our understanding is that remember that this my last duchess is not a part of critical theory. It's not a part of critical theory. What is part actually it's kind of like we are trying to evaluate the last my last duchess written by Robert Browning by imposing critical theory on it. Clear? Meaning that it's something like you are experimenting. Like when you learn a theory, you're going to experiment on that, whether it works or not, like scientific research. Okay, you get me. Have you done litmus paper test whether in the soap there is acid or not acid? Right? Yes. Then you do what? Litmus, litmus paper test, right? Then you bring a litmus paper, then you test it. If it becomes what? Blue. Mm -hmm. And if it's what? Red. And red, then what? If it suggests what? It's meaning that one will be suggesting that there is there is some acid, and one will be suggesting you that there is no acid, something like that. Okay, that is called the paper test. So we are going to use psychoanalytical reading, psychoanalytical criticism, psychoanalysis, the theory that has been coined by Sigmund Freud. Okay, we'll be trying to cover that. Okay, let's read that now. Let's go for it. If you have the page, right? You have the lecture sheet with you, right? So we'll be going for that. I'm reading that. Ferrara, uh, you find that my love searches by Robert Brown. Ferrara is the Duke. Name of the Duke, okay? Yeah, you can go for that Duke of Ferrara, the Duke of Ferrara. Okay. We're reading right now. That's my last Duchess painted on the wall, looking as if she were alive. I call that piece of wonder now. Fra Panto's hands work busily at him, and there she stands. Will please you sit and look at her? I say. Fra Panto, by design, for never read a strangers like you that picture countenance. The dead. And the passion of his earnest glance, but to myself the church is not pushed by the curtain, but I've drawn twenty for I. And see that they would ask me if the dears, how such it does him dear, so not the first. Are you to turn and ask this? Sir, it wasn't her husband's presence only, called that spot of jar into the Duchess' cheeks, perhaps. I want you to underline this line. I want you to underline this line. Can you just underline this line? Please underline. I see as they would ask me if the dirt, how such it comes from this word, uh, from this, how such it comes came here, so not the first. Are you not to turn and ask them, sir? It wasn't. Our husband praises all and called that spot of joy into the Duchess' cheek. Perhaps, proud hand of chest to say, our mantle loves over my ministry is too much. Our pain must never hope to reproduce the fame. Underline, 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 underline. Fame must never hope to reproduce the fame. Underline the line, faint must never hope to reproduce the faint half flat that dies along her throat. Have you seen the line? 
Okay. Such staff was a courtesy, she thought, and caused enough for calling up that spot of joy. She had a heart on the line again. She had a heart, how shall I say? Too soon made down, too easily increased. She liked whatever she looked at, and her looks went everywhere. Go to the next page now. Sir, it was all one my favor at her bed, the dropping of the daylight in the west, the bow of cherry, some officious fool broke into the orchard for her, the white meal she rode with round the covers, all an each to draw from her, I like that broken speech, a flash at last. She thanked man, good, but thanked somehow, I know not how, as if she read my gift of a nine hundred years old name, with anybody's gift, underline this, my gift of a nine hundred years old name, with anybody's gift. Remember, why did I say you got a line this line? This line is really, I think that you can remember that I say that he has a fame of 900 years old. And he said, What? My gift of a 900 years old name with anybody's gift. Who would stop to blame this sort of trickery? Even having the skill in speech, which I haven't, to make your will quite clear to such a one, and say just this or that, in you disgust me, hear you miss, or dare exceed the mark, and if she let herself be listened so. Nothing said her wish to use for sooth and made excuse. Even there would be some stooping, and I choose never to stoop. Oh, sir, she is fine, no doubt. Whatever I passed her, but who passed without much the same smile? This grill, I do commands, underline, this grill, I do commands. Then all the smiles talk together. Here she stands, as if she had lied. Will these arise? Will meet the company? Then I repeat, the count of your master's no matrix of resemble water that no just greatness of mine for dowry will be done. As this much is okay, still so there are four lines left. I hope the four in the long description. So let's go to the first page. I'm just going to the first page right now. If you go to the first page, the very first thing you'll find is that it's a very interesting thing. Again, I'm repeating it for you so that you understand me and then you can connect the theory with this poem. Our objective is to connect the theory with this poem. He says something like that, look at me. He says that, that's my love's duchess painted on the wall. Mean that he's beloved. And look, when do you paint someone's picture on your home? When? And you hang it on the wall. When do you do so? When do you do so? When you like. When you love someone. Right. Well, like, you know, you will find that many of your house, you'll find that what you have hanged the picture, the image of your father or mother when they got married, right? Right? Why do you do so? Because it's a memory for you. Right? It's a good memory for you. We love that. When we love someone, we love to we love their presence to be at our home in everywhere. We love them to be with us all the time. So remember, this is how the things work. That's my love duchess painted on the wall. Meaning that he just a beautiful painting, he did. And he said that it's been curtained, all have been curtained. And he said that the guy who came to visit and who came to just just listening to him. And he said that look, this is my wife, she is very pretty. Okay? And look, she's there. Standing as if she's alive. So you have to understand as if alive. What does it mean? What does this word mean? As if alive. Meaning that it already suggests to you that she's no more. She is no more. No more. And that's why you're saying that as if alive. Right? Kind of like she's there. Like standing or sitting somewhere. She's alive, feeling like she's still there. And now, then he says that, who painted the painting? I remember, what's the name of the painter? Fra Pango. Who painted that? Fra Pango. Who just painted a beautiful sketch of the Duchess. Do you? Now, and can you see that? Uh, this is just something like that. Now, he's asking someone, will you please you sit and look at her? Something like that. Have you seen that? He's inviting someone. Hey, look at the page. Look at the sheet. Will please you sit? Will please you sit? And look at her. Can you see this line? Can you find this line? Yes. yes. Now, it's something like you're inviting someone, right? Will please you sit? Hey, hey, sit and look at her. Meaning that someone is there, right? Someone is there whom you're telling your stories. Whom you're telling your, you know, all the things that you love to share. Do you? So someone is there. We're saying that, hey, will please you sit? Sit down. And have a look at her. Like you're invited. Look, she is my duchess. 
Now, the next thing that you can say, uh, then if I just want to uh, now look, and in the parenthesis there is a line. It says that since none pulled by the curtain, I have drawn for you, but I. Have you seen that in the parenthesis in the bracket? There is a line. Since none pulled by the curtain, I have drawn for you, but I. Have you seen that? Yes. You don't understand this. Yes. Now it says that very clear. That means that he is kind of not think of someone. It's like that his possessiveness. Like this marker belongs to whom? I, right? It's my marker, right? Now, if you want to touch this marker and if you want to take this marker, I won't mind if you just use this marker. Why? Because it's okay. I would say. But look, his possessiveness, he says something like that. The picture that you can see has been curtain, and he says that no one would dare, no one would dare you to move the curtain, but I. So he has the only power, he has the power only just to move this curtain. So no one would be hearing what's going on behind the wall. Clear? Good. You get me? So it shows what? This is something like that is autocratic. This is something like that is so much possessive. Right? Is it something like that he is utilizing all his power just to manipulate his beloved? Using all his resources and power. It's like enslaving someone. Enslaving, meaning that making someone slave. You have to listen to the text the order and commandments. And have you seen that? The word that Robert Brandon is using is sign of order. I gave you the order, you have to do it. Something like that, right? The orders are going on, right? <laughs> so this is the thing actually. So remember, when you read that, you find that it's like a king who is giving the order. Or it's like the judges which is doing order, order, order. Clear? So something like using the power to manipulate you. You have no choice. This is what I'm saying and you have to do it. Clear? Now go for it. Now again, now we'll be skipping the thing. Now, uh, uh, go for that. Mm, yes, now here. Faint must never hope to reproduce the faint half fat that dies along her throat. Have you seen that faint? Have you seen the word faint? Yes. I must never hope to reproduce the faint. Meaning that it's very interesting that once you paint something, once you create a beautiful, crafty word, can you just reproduce that word again? Like the way you have painted someone at first. Do you think that second time when you are trying to paint the same thing, will it be same? No. No. So this is what Robert Barney is saying you. That faint must never hope to reproduce the faint. Meaning that the faint meaning that like there was a coroness in the face of the Duchess. Like she was so like she was so jolly minded. <coughs> and she uh Robert Brandon is saying that even Frau Cantor, he's a very famous artist, but he won't be able to reproduce the smile and the jolly minded queen of the Duchess again. Because they smile, you have only smile. Can you just will your smile be all time the same? You know, smile. It's a different angle, right? All the time you find me, your smiles are different. Right? You try to give a pose, mm, uh, but when I try to give a pose, like, well, I'm not, I kind of give the same pose again and again. Can you do so? Until you use a 3D version of the computer or something like that. Here. So this is what I say. So it's a limitation of the art as well. It's a limitation of the literature as well. Once you write something, once you do something, you cannot reproduce the thing again. Like, it don't be like the first thing. When you create something, like, let me give an example. When you make a cup of tea, at the first time, okay, you find it what? It's sugarless, or it's some, a bit sugary. Then you go for the next time, again, you are trying to make a cup of tea again, and you find it what? That it's not becoming safe. The taste is different. Every time you make a cup of tea, the taste is different. It's not always equal. It's not always proportionate. And whenever you're cooking, and when you're making something, the taste doesn't remain the same all the time. Sometimes it's spicy, sometimes it's less spicy, sometimes it's fried, and sometimes it's not fried. And that's what you're finding that people are complaining. Right? So that's the thing of having a creative, like, you know, human beings, we cannot reproduce the thing in a way, like, same fashion. Okay? This line means that. Okay? The line that again, this will be my main part. Faith must never hope to reproduce the fame, how flat that dies along the throat. Now, 
again, she is trying to now the the Duke is trying to describe. She had her how shall I say? Two so many glad to easily impress. She liked whatever she looked at and had looks quite everywhere. That was the problem actually she had. Underline that. So you can just also give a mark, a remark here that what what was the problem of the Duchess? She was too friendly with human beings. She was too friendly actually. She was trying to be too friendly with all of her like official people. Meaning that official people, she was too friendly. Meaning that all the slaves were there, all the people were there living in the kingdom. She was too much free with them. And she's too, like, what's the complaint this youth is giving? She has in her, how shall I say? Read, read. Again, look at the line, look at the line. She had in her, how shall I say? Too soon made that, too easily impressed. She looked, whatever she looked on, and her looks were there. Can you see that? Yes. Again, I repeat. Can you memorize that? Look. Look at me. Hello. Hello. She had her, how shall I say? Meaning that you're saying that she had her, how shall I say? Meaning that he cannot express the quality or the feelings of her heart. She said that. He said something like that. She had her, how shall I say? To soon make clear. Meaning that she will be satisfied. She will be satisfied with a very small thing. To so make that too easily impressed. And she's impressed by everyone. Like even, I give you an example. Even if the duke is giving you a smile, if the duke, if the king is giving you a smile, you'll be responding to him with a smile. And if the slave gives her a smile, she'll be responding with a smile to the slave as well. And the king has a furious mind right now. And that has risen the anger of the king as well. Why? Because it says that like, you cannot do so because I'm a king, come on. I need some extra special care, intensive care you need, right? Right? Yes. I need an icing for it, right? Come on. I'm not going to have the same love that you're giving to everyone, right? Think of your beloved, right? Your girlfriend. Uh, think of your wife, think of your husband. If your wife is just giving you a, like, she loves you a lot, and then again, when a guy comes, and he also says, she also says that, oh, I love you a lot. Meaning that, and then you'll be, become mad. Come on, innocent. Why? Because you are saying me that you love me, and you're also saying the same thing to another guy. What does it mean? Meaning that, what does it mean? What does it mean? You can't do so, right? Meaning that she loves everyone, whoever comes in. And that's why this line something says something like that. She had a heart, how shall I say? Too soon made that, too easily impressed. She looked whatever she looked at, and her looks went everywhere. Meaning that she was so free with everyone. She was so friendly with everyone. If my wife is so friendly with everyone, I'm the same one. <laughs> Imagine yourself. Your husband is friendly with all the girls. <laughs> and he'll be saying what? And Nura will be saying, Talak! <laughs> Next year! Come on! No more! I don't want! <laughs> he'll be saying that. Why? Because it, it happens something. Because we, when you are, you have, you'll be alone with someone. You want all the care from her, <coughs> only for you. <coughs> all the possessiveness. So you can find it out there is that somehow. Think critically. So love has a dark side as well. What's the dark side? It helps you or it enables you to control someone's emotion. Right now, you you want someone to be like you. You have to be like me. Otherwise, I'm not going to love you. And you want that, hey, uh, your girlfriend call you and say that, hey, you know what, there's a party at my house, I'm going there, and there'll be boys and the girls. And you say, no, you cannot go. If you go, I'm not with you. And your girlfriend says, no, I'm going to go because that's my right to go. And he said, that's right. You have the right to go, and I have the right to what? Break our relationship, right? So you become so positive. Is this something, the dark side of the love, that you become too much possessive? Think of you. When you love someone, think of you become too much possessive. You, you try to control them. And you say that, I don't like. Uh, and sometimes you start liking something that you don't like, but you start liking something only for your beloved. Why? Because, like, give me an example. Like, you never had chicken in your life, but your girlfriend loves chicken a lot, then you start loving the chicken. 
right? Because it's not that you love the chicken, it's because you love, you love it. It's not that you love the chicken. Clear? It's not that I love, like, let me give you an example, like, I, I, I'm not a big fan of spicy things. I, I was a big fan of spicy things, but now I don't love the spicy things because my wife doesn't like the spicy things. So things will come on you. Love is something like it's interaction. It's defining that you're possessing the characteristics of your wife and you're possessing the characteristics of your husband as well. So this is the thing, but this king was a disciples. He didn't want that. Fear? No, fear for you to go for the next page. And look, this is really interesting. Ooh, uh, now, if you just go here right now, uh, she wrote, can you just look at the uh, line number five on the next page? She wrote with round hairs, all and each would draw from her. I like the approving speech and blush at least. She thanked I'm good, but thanks someone. I know not how, as if she read my gift of a 900 years old name with anybody's gift. And now, What's the fame the king had? You had. He had a kingdom of nine hundred years old. Here, how many years old? Nine hundred years old. And he says that he has a complaint. Now look, it's something like a mad lover is complaining about his lost beloved. Here, it's like like giving you thousand reasons to believe that why did I kill my wife? Trying to justify himself. Because he killed his wife. And he's trying to justify that why did I kill my wife? Listen, this is the thing she used to do with me, and that's why I killed my wife. Clear? Now we say that I have a fame of 900 years old, okay? And the officious fool, here the word officious fool, meaning that it's staff that are working in the kingdom, in the in his house, okay? So when they come with the cherry, do you understand what is cherry? A cherry, a kind of fruit, okay? If someone comes with the cherry to the queen, or the duchess, she'll be giving you a smile. And when someone, and if the king gives his kingdom to the queen, she'll be giving a sad smile. Is it fair? What do you call it? Fair? Fair? My husband, my king, giving me the kingdom of 900 years old, and an officious fool, officious, they're giving me a cherry, and the cherry is equal to 900 years old fame. If I just write it down something like that, a cherry is equal to 900, 900 years old. Can it be equal? Can it be equal? According to the Duchess, it can be equal, but according to the Duke, it cannot be equal. Here, will you give your house only because, will you just have a transaction? Will you have a transaction only for someone who will be giving you a burger and you just going to give him the restaurant, home restaurant? <laughs> You're not going to do that, right? There must be a balance, right? So that, anyway, it doesn't go with the thing, but what I'm trying to make you understand that when someone loves you, uh, he gives you a kingdom of 900 years old and when uh, officials then gives you a cherry and you're giving the same smile and you're treating him in the same fashion. Is it okay? You cannot treat that. You cannot treat in a way. And that's why the Duke was so frustrated by himself because he was trying to get love from the Duchess but he wasn't getting it to He was trying to get the attention from the Duchess for all the favors, all the favors he did to the Duchess but she wasn't returning that favor. But because she wasn't understanding actually, what's the difference between a cherry and what's the difference between a 900 years kingdom? Clear? There's the problem. And that's why he said, now look. But then, somehow, I know not how, as she ranked my gift of a 900 years old name with anybody's gift. Yeah. Who is took to bear this sort of treatment? Even had his skill in his speech. Now he gives you a few logic. Before he tells you that how he murdered her, she's giving he's giving you logic. Look, be with me. Even are you watching with me? Are you seeing the lines? Yes. yes. Be with me. Even had you skill in speech, meaning that imagine that I'm so good a eloquent speaker, meaning that I can speak very well. Here, now he's saying that even had you skill in speech, meaning that 
Imagine yourself that you can speak very well, a pretty well, meaning that you can make someone understand. Here, then go to the next line. Which I have not. I'm sorry, I, I can't. Meaning that we cannot make people understand. Who is saying that? The people to you. He's saying that I cannot make people understand. He said that even though, even though if I had the skill, meaning that if I had the skill to make people understand, but I haven't. Then what does he say? To make your will quite clear to such as one. I said, just this or that. If in your disgust, we hear you miss. Now he's saying that I could have a conversation with the Duchess and saying that, look, my wife, you shouldn't be doing that because it disturbs my heart. It disturbs me a lot. Don't do that. I could have said it, but you know what? I'm not good at speech. Perhaps I'm not going to have a conversation with my Duchess. I'm not going to do so. Because if you think that, now try to understand in a quick manner that you think that someone is saying that I wish I could make my wife understand. Okay, he understand that he should have made, he should have made the queen understood. But she, he didn't do that. But he didn't, especially didn't do that. Now think of yourself right now. Can you imagine yourself that someone, is it something like he really tried to make her understand? Or is something that is burning up the jealousy? The ignite of the fire is burning on his head, on the cheeks of the jeans. And now he's giving you the logic. Because when you murder someone, when you do a crime, you found thousand reasons to justify that crime. This is why I did the crime. Uh, right or wrong? Right. You want to defend yourself, and that's the theory we call it defensive mechanism. Okay, you're trying to defend, right? You did a crime. Like someone, like if you find that a car hits another car and the, the guy was who hit, you know, who hit the car and he was saying, I have nothing to do. Why did you suddenly stop over there? But didn't you see that? There is a stop over there. But you find it that like if you just think of a real traffic scenario, you will find the same thing. Someone is hitting a car and you'll be saying, What? I had nothing to do. I tried to break, but it didn't work. Right? And they'll be giving you a thousand excuses just to defend yourself. But you deep inside your heart, you know that you are the culprit. But you'll be trying to defend. Right? And that's why this is what the deal is doing right now. He's saying what? Listen. And if she let herself be less so, and now she's, uh, he's saying the wrong. I wish that she rectified herself. I wish that she, uh, something like, she purified herself. I wish that she understood by herself. Here. Like something like that he's saying in that, I wish that the Duchess have, have noticed that. This is what I was hearing before. But now we say that, uh, not being said, I wish to use, or even, now he's saying that, I wish she was agreeing with my thoughts. She was agreeing with my thoughts. She was agreeing with my feelings. And made excuse. Or even, like he said that, okay, she could have given an excuse. Right? Excuse me, what? Given an excuse. Like, like when you say that, when you uh, like do something. Like if you're late in the class, then you give excuse that there yeah, was traffic jam. Right? Right, this is what the uh, Duke is saying that she could have given me excuse, but she didn't, didn't give an excuse. Now he's trying to justify all the things. I could have made her understand. I could have talked to her. She could have been listened by herself, or she, uh, like, given me some excuses. So what are the logics? Number one, I could have, I could make her understand. Meaning that you are going to make her understand. I could do that here, or. I could have forgiven, number three, or uh, she should have excused, meaning that she should have like said sorry to me, or she should have rectified herself, meaning that she should have learned it by herself that I'm not going to do that. Come, come here. Even then would be some stupid. And now look how 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 sexy it is. And he said that even she was telling me sorry, even if I'm going to forgive her, but still there are some things that I can't afford. <laughs> you see that? And now look, his brutality. He's saying that still there are something that I can't afford. And what is that? And that's what he's saying. And I choose. Look at the line. 
and I choose never to stoop. Oh, sir, she smiled, no doubt. Whenever I passed her, but who passed without much the same smile? Meaning that whenever I used to pass her, she used to give me a smile. And when a slave is to passing her, she used to give me a smile. Again, he's trying to justify why he did. And this is one something, right? When you, <laughs> you should know actually. Imagine that um, uh, like if you're so jealous of your girlfriend, if your girlfriend is smiling at someone's mistake or something, and then you say, why do you look at the girl? And your girlfriend should say, if you're looking at a girl, the girlfriend is looking at the girl. Am I not pretty? Are you happy with me? Right? These are the questions that comes into your mind because we are human beings. Okay, now he says that what? This grill, what does it mean? What does it mean by this grill? Grill. This grill meaning, the meaning is that my brain wasn't working anymore. Okay? Disturbing me in my brain, I get command. And he say, right? I get command, then all the smile is stop to me. The smile, she's the smile to stop the body. No more smile. And now again, here, come with me. Here she stands, looking as if she's alive. And again, when he described all the things, I murder her, I give command and murder her. And then he said, now look, look at the face. She's smiling, she's alive. You get me? <laughs> a psychopath, right? You cannot say that, right? And she said that, and he said that, what does it mean? Look, so he crafted a picture that, which had a smile on the face of the Duchess. It's something like that, like he was so fond, fond of the smile of the Duchess. And that's why he captured it for a lifetime and he hanged it. He actually loved her. Do you understand that? But his love was destructive love. Do you understand what is destructive love? He was destroying him. Do you? Now, come here. Will please you rise? Remember, can you remember? Will please you see? Now I'm saying what? Will please you rise? Like become your realm with me. Come here. Now I'm saying that imagine that your realm was in the class. I say that will please you see? Now I'm feeling that will please you rise and come with me. Right? So now sit down. Now it says that you are telling that someone, someone you invited at first to see. Now you're requesting him to what? To rise. Why? Because someone is waiting in the ground floor who came up with a new offer, marriage maker. Because the guy who was sitting, like Nura, he was a marriage maker. He came with a proposal, okay? Meaning that the Duke is going to marry again. But before he marries, he's telling you about his last touches. And that's why the name of the poem is, My Last Touches. Here, here. So, okay now? Now, what I want from you, Imagine yourself that you never heard of this word. Second life. You never heard of this word. Fear? Fear? Now, just jot down. Now, just write down. There will be your homework. You'll be writing down. How will you, like, what are the negative characters? You'll be just doing something like that. If I have a gesture, it is there a quite gesture? Sorry, I'm not kidding. So, here, you are going to do something like that. You do just something like that. This is how we should be learning, actually. And this is how, okay, so you just write it down, this is the deal, clear? And then you write down the good sides, and then you write down the negative sides, clear, clear, and write down all the good qualities it has, and all the bad qualities it has, clear? That's up to you, analyze it by yourself, give your own words, if you are unable to produce English words, then you write it down in bound of the English words. And then again, you just write it down here. Again, you write it down here. The Duchess, the negative, the positive one, the negative one. Write down her characters. How far do you find her good? And then you'll be finding it out that all the things that you have done is somehow connected with. Okay, before we jump to this, 
But I'll be thinking that look how the cycle things work. Okay? So this is your homework. Is it clear for you? Clear? Is there any doubt with the poem? Any doubt with the poem? Do you understand this? What does it say? Any doubt with that? No. Okay. And look, I'm not going to accept this kind of book in my class. What does it say? English and I'm, I'll be never giving you questions it's like something. I'll be giving you open book exam. You can use any resources. So the questions will be okay. Like I'll be giving you this whole poem, and then I'll be asking you, you psychoanalytical critical theory to examine this poem. And you're not going to Google it. You're not going to like. It's not going to give you any answer. Here. Around. Okay. Uh, so you do. Just um, turn it off. Thank you so much everyone for being in the class. I hope that you'll become regular in the class.